welcome back to the Real Estate Sales Summit. Hey, today I am extremely excited. I have a uh, an old, no, he's not old, but you know, we've known each other for a while. Um, well, I don't know, he may, no, he's not old. Known each other for a long time, Damon Gittier. Is that right? Did I say that right? Okay. That is correct, sir. How All you doing? All right, good. Because sometimes, you know, that's right. When you get rich, it's going to be Gettier, but now it's Gettier, correct? Yeah, rich okay. will be Gettier, but for now, it'll stay Gettier. Perfect, but, perfect. But I tell everybody, I answer to anything, as long as it's spelled <laughs> right on a check, I don't care. There, hey, and there you go. That's right, which we're going to get into in a second because you make some massive checks on listings. So by the way, guys, that's what we're talking about this morning. So Damon is in the Virginia area, uh, lives, I believe, in Salem, but has a, a foothold and a presence all over the state of Virginia, and we'll let him get into that. Um, and just a phenomenal agent, has built a massive team, also started a uh, radio company that finds and sets ads. We'll go into that in our advanced session as well and talk about that because it's extremely unique. Um, so with that, welcome, welcome, Damon. Hey, thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So, so everybody can get to know a little bit more about you as well. Tell them, you know, a little bit of history. How'd you get into real estate? What are you doing now? Where are you? Go ahead. It's kind of funny because um, I always wanted to do real estate in high school, which I graduated in 1990. So that tells everybody how old I am. You are um, young. Yeah, very young. <laughs> wanted to do real estate in high school. And I don't know. I mean, that course was to the right and I went left. You know, I, uh, you know, graduated high school, went in the army, was in the army for a couple of years. Um, got out of the army as a prison guard at a maximum security prison for a couple of years. Fortunately, I broke my ankle in there and that kind of got me out of that line of work and started selling insurance. Then from insurance went to, um, went to insurance to cars, cars to copiers, God forbid, then copiers to circuit city. And I was at Circuit City for five years and um, made good money there. As we, we said that the money made a, I can't say it like it, money, money just made you kind of a whore because it was easy money. You didn't have to work for it. It just, people showed up, you sold them what they came to buy and you made 60, 70, 80,000 a year. It was easy money. I had my real estate license for about six months because I didn't like the hours, the retail hours, and I hadn't done anything with it. In February 5th, uh, 2003, Jeff Cook and I have the exact same story. So February 5th, 2003, um, we come to work and the door's locked. And we're like, what the heck? And they call us all in, they read from a script. And basically, if you made over $29,000 in change, you were laid off. And it was a really weird layoff. You weren't eligible to hire any less than you were making, but they weren't going to hire anybody for more than $29,000. So, so you're out. You're out. 8,000 people fired. And so, you know, I was a little hot headed back then. They said, please don't say anything. We walk outside because all these other people are outside. So I walked out and I'm like, I got fired. You're all fired. <laughs> and so I um, got in my car. I'm like, crap. I'm a real estate agent. You know, I'd sold zero houses, had zero experience. I'd gone through the training at the company, but I had zero experience. So I go to my office. Steve Turner was a broker. It was a big regional. They had about 300 agents, regional company. And I said, hey, I just got laid off. I need to sell houses. What do I do? And he said, well, you got to contact your friends. I'm like, they all just got laid off. You know, my, my friends, because you know your friends are who you work with typically. Right. And I'm like, they, everybody that made money is now unemployed. And so um, next thing he did is, you'll remember this. A lot of people watching this won't know what this is. But he handed me this antiquated system of work. It was called a phone book. <laughs> right? You think about it now, you know, your phone book's right here. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. But back then, we had a phone book. He handed me the phone book, and he said, start calling. And so all BS aside, I sat in a cubicle outside of his office. Best thing I could ever do. I sat in a cubicle outside his office. From 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., five was really seven days a week because I didn't have any money. And I called, hi, this is Damon Gatier with Owens and Company Realtors. Who do you know that might want to buy or sell a house next 60 or 90 days? And I did not sell a house till I got to the B's, and there are a crap load of A's. Wow. Okay? There's just yeah. a crap load of A's. But what it did, it did two things. One, because there were so many agents and so many problems, 
I, I sat outside his office and I heard every single thing a real estate agent did wrong. Like I heard every mistake that went wrong in that company for months and months and months. And then the other thing that happened is agents that, cause you remember back then, God, this industry's changed so much. Oh, so yeah. back then when somebody called you, they left a message. Yeah. When they left a message, they left a, it was high tech. It was on a digital answering machine. Okay. And when they left you a message, they didn't expect a call back till tonight or tomorrow. Okay. That's true. That's true. You know, it wasn't right. like now that if you don't answer, they're going to call somebody else because you're ignoring them. It's they don't expect a call back because they knew you had to get to the machine to get the answer. So agents would come with post-it notes the next morning and just drop them on my desk and say, pay me a referral if you sell it. So all, all the agents, the experienced agents, remember we had sign calls back then. Like people yeah. actually called on signs and because there was no MLS on the internet. It was a book. Right. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just wild how far since you and I've been in this business, it has changed. Yeah. So, you know, the, the agents that were there, they had the sign calls. They had everything from the answer machine the night before. They couldn't answer those calls. And so they would just drop them on my desk and say, hey, pay me 25%. Pay me 25%. Well, that first year ended up being rookie of the year for the MLS starting in February. And it was simply because everyone saw my work ethic. Yeah. And so somehow, and I don't even know how it happened. So that was 2003. Somehow, 2004, Long and Foster came in and bought the company. So it was corporate America again. I had no interest, zero interest in being in corporate America again. Um, so I talked to a guy that I was coaching with, Alan Thompson at the time. Um, and he was with Remax Allegiance. And I'm like, why don't y'all move an office here? And somehow, and I don't even know how it happened. Somehow I progressed from him opening an office here to me opening an office and I wasn't a broker. I'd only been in the business, active in the business for a year. And somehow, I don't even know if it was legal. I don't think it was. But somehow, I became a minority owner in Remax Allegiance, which at the time was the largest Remax in the world. We had 42 offices, 1,740 agents. Oh, wow. And that was me. Yeah. With, 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 Remax, for, with, with Remax Allegiance for three years, the crash happened started doing capital calls because we had leases up in Northern Virginia at 40,000 a month. Yeah. And you know what leases are in big cities. I mean, it's bad. Yeah. Capital yeah. calls and that being part of a big fish didn't really feel too good. Um, left there, did my own Remax. Remax first realty was here in Blacksburg. Did that for about five years, looked at it and Remax is a good company. I'm not knocking Remax for me. I didn't like the branding because there's no call to action. It's more branding, not specifically come see me. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, I'd paid them $1.1 million over eight years. I didn't know that. I, I realized I hadn't made $1.1 million from it. And so went independent and did the independent thing. A lot happened in that independent stage. Um, I'd done the foreclosures and I'd sold a couple hundred houses a year doing foreclosures. Realized that grind. Yep. wasn't really what I wanted to do. I'd done the short sales. Um, you know, I was doing like 70 short sales a year during the crash. And that's, yes. that's a grind. I mean, that's, uh, it is, it is. There's a lot to those. There's a lot to it. And you know, the people didn't appreciate it. The banks didn't appreciate it. You, you made money, but you're the most unappreciated person in the room. Yes. And so, um, but all of that funded me getting my first CRM, which was Boomtown. Um, love grew to death, um, was with Boomtown for a while that I left because I was in multiple MLSs and it wasn't, it wasn't fluid enough to work without having a different system in each MLS and that got expensive. Right. Did the Boomtown thing that funded me. Cause back then, if you had a CRM and a lead system, it was like printing money. Yeah. And it wasn't like today where everybody has one and you're competing so much. Did the Boomtown thing, got into radio, ran radio really successfully for a couple of years. So successfully, you and I are friends with Lars. Yep. Um, Lars actually called me one day and he said, hey, isn't this your, ra your radio ad? And he sent it to me. I'm like, yeah. And he said, well, this company just sent it to me to run. And I'm like, well, if my ads are good enough for that company to send you to run, maybe I should do radio. Yep. <laughs> you know, so I started the radio company with a partner. And so it's just kind of all, it's kind of one of those things, you know, people ask, you know, are you just lucky? And you know this. Luck is when a prepared mind meets an opportunity. Yep. 
You got and it. Most people have opportunities and they're like, eh, no, I don't want to take the risk. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. I was born with nothing. I can go back to nothing and I can build it again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's kind of how I got from there to here. Nice. Nice. Well, it's, it, it shows people that if you're willing to do what it takes, you can succeed and Correct. to be able to do things and take advantage of those opportunities because they are there for everybody. And yeah, everything's changed over the past years, but it still comes down to your work ethic and what you're willing right. to do regardless of what the economy and what the tech companies are doing. Correct. So let's get into it because you do some really interesting things with listings and I don't think that you ever have a challenge with showing your value and getting the commission rates that you want. That be accurate? Oh, absolutely. So what sets you apart? How do you, one, how do you generate listings and two, how do you convert them for maximum commission and return on your investment? Okay. So we do, we, we, pray, we position ourselves and part of when we are in front of a client, we actually tell them this, that we are a marketing company with a real estate license. Yeah. Okay. So we are a marketing company with a real estate license. And it's funny because I get all these, you get on all these forums and people say, well, that's marketing. Well, that's marketing. That's marketing. What the hell do you think you do? Yeah. I mean, what do you think you do? My first broker told me, if you are going to depend on your friends and family to make a living in this business, you need to quit now. Okay. And I took that to heart. And I know a lot of people would make enough money doing that, but you're not gonna make real money doing that. Okay. So I've always positioned myself as a marketing company. And so we do the radio advertising. Um, we do, and, um, in my market, we do 59 days. We sell it for free. We started with guaranteed sale. Guaranteed sale brought a lot of low end listings. Mm -hmm. Um, and in my market, you're probably thinking low end is what my average sales price, but we were getting a lot of hundred, our average, like 120. Okay. We did guaranteed sale. Yep. We changed to um, 59 days. We sell it for free and we average about 180, 170, 180, which is our market average. So, you know, Southwest Virginia, we don't have high sales prices, but 170, 180 is our average. Okay. Okay. And so, you know, and you and I were in the same coaching group a long time ago. Um, I met a guy there named Thomas. We just talked about him a little bit ago. And Thomas has always charged more because he would talk about his value. And I was, um, we started charging 7%, you know, four to us, three to the other side. We're doing well on it. And Thomas called me out of the blue. He was going up the interstate and passing Roanoke. He's going to play golf at the homestead. And we were talking. I said, hey, just want to let you know, we're listing at seven. He said, well, that's okay. I'm like, what do you mean it's okay? He said, we do eight. I'm like, what? He said, we do eight. I'm like, what do you mean you do eight? And he told me. And so I, I swear to God, I drove, it was about a mile and a half from my office, came to my office that said, meeting time, had a meeting with my listing agents. I'm like, we charge 8%. They're like, what? We can't do that. I'm like, yeah, we can. You know? And I'll tell you, and I'm going to skip forward, then you can back me up if you want yep. to. Everybody says, how can you do that? How can you do that? How can you do that? How can you even get an appointment? And, you know, I do some speaking around the country, and it always amazes me that when someone calls you on the phone and says, what's your commission rate? What, is, what, is, what do 90% of agents in the country have two answers? What are they? Well, it's negotiable. Right. Click. Done. Yep. <laughs> done. And then it's, well, it's 6%. Done. Yep. All right. Here's the problem. What did they ask you? They didn't ask you what the total comp and co broke is. They right. said, what is your commission? Yep. Yep. So my commission is three to 5%. Totally honest. Three to five percent. That's what we're going to charge you to sell your house. Three to five percent. Okay. Did you ask about what's the total comp or what's the co broke? Nope. No. Mm -mm. Now there's going to be some people that watch this play. That's dishonest. That's just, uh, then this this video is not for you. Yeah. Because you need to get out of your head and, and stop having the preconceived ideas. Okay. If you want to make that NAR lawsuit null and void, quit thinking like everybody else thinks. Charge what you're worth. Figure yeah. out what you're worth and charge that. Charge what you are worth. Yeah. So how do you do that? How do you set yourself apart when you're in there? So that's your, that's your answer. Well, my, I'm between three and 5%. So now that you're in there, where's your value? How do you, how do you set yourself apart as that marketing company, as opposed to, you know, Sally Smith down the road, that's a real estate agent. So first and foremost, we dominate the airways. 
Yep. Okay. We dominate social media. So that's the two things we do. Number one is we dominate the airways to dominate social media. So it, it amazes me how many agents, when they market, when they advertise, they want to market or advertise where nobody else is, where, not where nobody else is, where nobody's shopping. Okay. So you want to spend, you know, $5,000 a year to go on a shopping buggy where people put their purse down on it or their kid's butt. Okay. And when you're marketing that, how many people actually go into that store? Yeah. Like how many people actually go into that store? I use Kroger click list. Now I don't go into the store. You don't know, they bring it out to me. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, so so many people want to market and they think, oh my God, this is going to work. This is a niche or a, a menu at a restaurant. Okay. Well, how many people go in the menu in that restaurant a week? You know, four or 500. Yeah. And if you look at four or 500, how many are you going to buy? 7% so 35. You know, I mean, when they, if people really extrapolate the numbers, they're marketing where nobody is instead of marketing where they are. I tell people all the time, tell my agents all the time, you know, hey, what if I paid for a TV commercial for you for a year? Like, oh, my God, that's great. All right, who watches TV? Nobody. And they don't watch the, the commercials anymore. Who spends three hours a day on this? Yeah. Okay? That's where people are. The agents, I don't want, yeah, I don't want to do video. I don't want to do a video. I don't want to do pictures. I don't want to do this. I want to be private. I want to be private. Great. You're a secret agent. Congratulations. Congratulations. Because nobody uses a secret agent. Okay. So first and foremost, getting back to your question is, um, we dominate the airways with radio. We dominate social media. Okay. So the consumer knows who we are. Half of our job is done for whoever they walk in here. They know who we are. Okay. And it's not a, you know, who are you? And I'm comparing you to this agent, this agent, they know who we are. Okay. So that's number one. We're also, our business location, kind of like yours in Ballotown, our business location right on the corner of the two busiest streets, and I got to wrap vehicles outside. We're a marketing company. We don't hide ourselves. Okay. So when they come in, first and foremost, um, this, this will rock 90% of the world's out there. Almost all of our listing appointments are in office. Okay. They're in yes. office. You can't do that. It won't work in my market. You can never do that here. Bull. Okay. Yep. Bull. You can do it in any market, okay? Because I know and you know it's done here. We also know it's done in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yep, sure is. Don't we? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and that office down there, we were discussing, that office sucks, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The location? No, I mean, that office sucks. I mean, nobody would use that office. Oh, no. Uh-uh. I mean, never. No. Uh-uh. No. No. Uh-uh. no, yeah. no. Yeah. And Sarasota, too. That's that's a bad one also. It won't, it won't yeah, it just won't work. Either. Yeah, won't work yeah. there either. So, anyway, <laughs> it will work, everybody. And it's funny because I would imagine, it's kind of funny because I actually about six weeks ago, started having milk delivered to my house again, just because we have a dairy here and it's fresh. It's actually near your dad's place. Oh. It's, a, it's, it's a dairy here and it's fresh and they actually bring it good yeah. for the kids. But until then, I never had milk. Do you, can you imagine 50, 60 years ago, somebody saying you're going to have to go to the grocery store to get milk? No. That'll never work. That'll never work. <laughs> That'll never work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about when doctors no longer came to the house anymore? Do you think, you think somebody told the doctor, well, if you don't go to the house anymore, you're going to be out of business. You're going to make them come to you? Really? <laughs> yep. Because the thing is this, when you're in somebody's house, first and foremost, they're going to show you everything they've done to the house that does not matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Okay? I will go so far as to say that most people, most consumers don't want you at the house at the listing appointment. Because if you think about, well, it's not ready yet. Well, I need to clean up. Well, I need to do this. Well, I need to do that. They're pushing you off because they don't want you in the house yet. Yeah. So 90, 98% of our listing appointments are in the office. Maybe 99. How do you get them there? What do you say to, to you know, to, since it won't work in any other area and just works in yours, what's just the special tonight. thing that you say? Well, you know a little bit about my area. So let's be clear. I cover 27 counties. Yep. Okay, I cover about 180 miles wide by 140 miles north south, so it just won't work. Yeah, okay, here's the deal when you so, what we tell people is this you know, I mean, so some we when 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 can you meet us in our office? Okay, we're here usually from eight to five. Yep, okay, we can do six if you need be. Do you have a lunch break? When would you like to meet us? 
Okay. And if they say, well, don't you need to see the house? Absolutely. We'll be happy to see it, but we don't need to see it to your client. Yeah. Okay. Because why would I need to see somebody's house? That's not a client. And everybody said, well, don't you need to see the house to price it? Really? Really? I mean, really? What do you need to see? Let's be clear. And I'm going to, Rob, I'm sorry. I'm going to piss off some of the people on here, okay? I love it. <laughs> it's a box. Yeah. It's a box. Yep. If you've been in this business for any time at all, you know what it's worth. Yes, you There do. might be some nuance you don't know about. They'll tell you. Yeah. It might be in crappy location. It might be in crappy shape. You're going to find out if you go look at it right after you list it. Then yep. you have that come into Jesus talk. Be like, hey, look, you said X and it's Y. Yeah. Okay? But how much time do you save? Because look at you drive to the house 30, 45 minutes, okay? You or say it's 15 minutes. But if you're in traffic anywhere, 30, 45 minutes, 30 minutes there. You go there, you gotta do the tour. Oh my God. Yes, it's got a roof. Thank you. I'm glad to know it has a roof. Yes, it has a furnace. Absolute. Oh wow, it's a clean one. That's nice. You, you know, and 30, 45 minutes, an hour on the tour. And then he sit there, and then what happens? Somebody calls him. Oh, hold on a second, I get this. Somebody knocks on the door because they see your car in the driveway, they're nosy, they want to know who it is. Kids running in and out, TV's on. Somebody has to go use the bathroom. They get a drink to do this. It's all this distraction. Yeah. And then you walk in like, holy crap. I just spent two and a half hours. Oh crap, I didn't get it signed. Okay. When we do, our rooms are set up, and I'd like, I'll actually show you a picture sometime. Our rooms are set up psychologically, okay? So when you walk into a room, the client's back is never to you. The clients are facing the door yep. because yep. nobody likes to be walked behind, okay? So there's two chairs on one side, there's one over here at the agent, and then we have one on the end. So if there's a closing, then the agent can sit down there with the closing agent's over here. So there's two signs that we have our signs on the wall. Show the for sale signs. They have their coming soon sign and their open house any day sign. You remember that whole yep. fiasco? Oh, yeah. Sitting against the wall. There's lock boxes, a manual, and a, and a super box sitting on the table. They're looking at that super box, and they're like, I ain't taking that home. That's what they're thinking. Yep. And the agent's like, you taking that home? <laughs> okay. They take the home, the sign home to put in the yard with them. So core plus sign coming soon. Core plus sign open house any day. They're taking that home sign home with them. Okay. Equity vows is already done. We still do equity vows. Yep. Equity vows already done. Do you do equity vows still? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yep, same one you do. Equity vows. One of the greatest things Lars ever taught me was that equity about. Yeah. Okay. Strong. And we do a we do this thing. It's called a listing. Everybody watch this. It's called a listing presentation. Okay. This listing presentation. What do most agents do? This is what most agents do. I'm going to put a sign in the yard. I'm going to put it in the MLS. I'm going to syndicate it on these things. You ain't doing shit because it's already done for you. Okay. You, I'm going to syndicate it on these sites and then I'm going to sit home and I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that we get an offer for you. Okay. We don't do that. We show them exactly what we're going to do. First, we show them statistically we sell their houses faster and for more money versus the MLS. Okay. So in our market, we sell our houses typically 4.1% more. Okay. And we sell it faster by like, our market's not great. So like 30, 40 days faster than the market. So you're going to make one less payment. Awesome. Okay. Not only that, but in our market, 4% more, we'll use 200,000 for numbers. So I'm going to sell you $8,000 more. But to do that, to sell it for $8,000 more, I'm going to charge you, you know, $4,000 to do that. So you're going to net $4,000 more than if you listen to somebody else. Yep. We don't apologize for it. There's no yep. apology for it. I'm Absolutely. going to make you more money. And to do that, I charge you a little bit of that money to do it. Perfect. Perfect. Well, you're setting what you're and what you're also doing is you're bringing them in there and you're putting them into your environment so that there are no distractions. So you really can show Correct. that value piece. Correct. Correct. You're in control when they're in your house. When you're in their house, they're in control. Yeah. Yeah. And the other part is this. We also charge an administrative fee. Okay. And uh, so our administrative fee in my market is six hundred ninety five dollars. OK, which, you know, I've got people that are in four hundred thousand dollar markets that aren't charging that. Yeah. And it's really simple. If you want to know if you can charge it, go look at what your car dealers charge because they set the bar for you. They did. they did your job for you. I just bought two new cars out at the Ford place and this year. And I was in there and the guy was like, you know, you're the first real estate agent that hasn't complained about our processing fee. I'm like, why would I? You make me $200,000 a year with that thing. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. 
Why would Absolutely. I complain? Everybody charges up. Every company out there. I mean, you look at your phone bill, you look at the autos, you look at, at, at every, shoot, half of the traditional companies out there charge a processing fee and then charge it to the agents. Correct. Right. The agent is, I'm not going to say dumb. They're not savvy enough to pass that fee on to someone else. Right. Okay. The, the problem in this industry is this. I was talking to a good friend of mine the other day that's not charging yet. I'm like, dude, and here, here's the problem. Charging 3% or not charging an admin fee. Here's the problem. When someone graduates real estate school, okay, with zero experience, they're charging X dollars. Yep. Why in the hell are you getting paid with three years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years experience, the same as someone that just just graduated school. Yeah. Why would you do that? That makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. It makes no sense. And if someone thinks that's what you're worth, then you have not explained your value very well. Exactly. Well, in, in the absence, you know, in the absence of value, price is the determining factor. And that's right. why all of these guys always have this issue. And you're seeing it, you're seeing it in a lot of the MLSs around where, where it's, 2% to the buyer's agent, 2.5% to the buyer's agent. And it's not necessarily because the listing agent is getting the four or whatever it is. It's right. because they haven't gotten even, they're, they're at five because they Correct. can't negotiate. And so and there, there's another issue. So on the buy side, like our buyer agency agreement states specifically, now we're in a crappy market, okay? Yep. Our minimum commission on the buy side is $3,000, which means when those people come to us for 50, 60, $70,000 houses, yep. they got to stroke a check. Yep. Or 3%, whichever is greater. Yep. All right. So when someone offers two and a half, I don't care. I don't care because when we write up our offer to the seller, it's going to be seller agrees to pay X dollars. Yes. Now you can't, you cannot use a contract, if you're, if you're a realtor, you can't use a contract to change the commission offered. I'm not changing the commission offered. Right. I'm asking you to satisfy the commission that my buyer is obligated to pay. My buyer has to buy it, pay it. And if my buyer does not have the ability to pay it and you don't pay it, they're not buying your house. Yeah. Okay. They're yeah. not buying your house. Agents need to educate themselves on how this business is supposed to work and not necessarily how it does work. Yes, correct. Well, it, it does work because of agents limitations that they've self-imposed as an industry. Correct. And as we've gotten correct. from the old guys that have been in it. Well, and, and that could end up changing too, depending on what these laws and lawsuits do where the agents better figure out how to negotiate their buyer side. Well, I will tell you this. Um, everybody's all worried about this lawsuit. I'm actually yeah. looking forward to it yeah. because what's going to happen, I think, is we're going to flush a lot of agents out of the business that Absolutely. don't really have any business being in the business. Yep. And those of us that know how to run a business, that know how to write a contract, that know how to convey value, we will reap, I mean, reap the rewards of that. I'm looking forward to it. Love and, uh, it. Love I mean, it. So when you talk about lists, last year our average list commission was 4.14% on okay. the list side. Yep. Now, I will tell you this. So everybody's like, so you won't take with or without your uh, processing fee without, without, without just the commission is 4.14. Yep. So yep. Here, here's the key thing about that. I also will not, will not, if I, if the listing is sellable, I am listing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll list it at 1% if it's sellable. I'm not walking over. Nobody else. If it's a sellable listing, no one else is putting that sign in the yard. I don't care what the commission is. And so my agents are trained 5%, four and a half, four, four and a half. I mean, four and a half, four, three and a half, three. If someone says they're doing it for two and I can't get it, you weren't good enough to get it, you take it. Yeah. We've had agents, we, had, we stopped this. We had agents, I won't say what company, uh, we had agents telling people, hey, look, they charge more commission. They charge more. I mean, what do you mean we charge more? What do you mean? They said you charge 5%. I'm like, no, nah, we do it for one. What are you talking about? And then we'll call and thank the agent. Hey, thank you for referring us. You know? <laughs> yes. Such and such said that you, you've referred us to them. All right, because when the, when the competition is talking trash, take them out. Yep. Take them out. 
Because yeah. listen, let's be clear. If you're any good, and hopefully if you're watching this video, you're good. Okay. If you're any good, if you get a listing, you should get a buyer. If you're if you're okay, you should get a buyer off of it. A buyer, one. Okay. If you're good, you should get one and a half, two buyers off of it. Yeah. Okay. So if you put if you don't take this listing because oh I'm not going to take it because I'm going to make my eight percent. I'm I I read the internet. I'm on Lab Code Agents and I'm on the Real Estate Mastermind page and nobody discounts their commission on there, which is total BS. Okay? Yes. Those oh, are yeah. internet forum junkies that probably don't even sell houses. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I don't discount my commission. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to let that other agent discount their commission and they're going to sell that house. Okay. One, who's making the deposit in their bank account? That yeah, agent. That's right. Who's getting the buyers off that house? That, that agent. agent. And if you're in a second second home price, like in my market, say you're a 250 or 300, mm -hmm. you let someone else take it. The other person, that buyer, he's got a house to sell. Okay. Yeah. So you lost one to two to 2.5 pieces of business because your pompous ass listened to somebody on an internet forum that isn't paying your bills. Spot on. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. It isn't paying your bills. Yep. So my agents know we take the business. Yep. Okay. So saying that we sold three, maybe four for zero or a thousand dollars last year. Yeah. And we still averaged 4.14%. Yeah. Yeah. Because the reality is, is that's, that is few and far between. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And you are looking at it at a bigger picture. You're looking at the whole process because every listing you're right is if you suck, it's only one. But more than likely, it's a lot more than that. And if you look at long term, it's even more right. than that. Yep. Yeah. Because now you have a rating. Says if you treat it right, it should be seven pieces of business. Yeah. I haven't experienced that yet. I haven't been in the business long enough, but I've had a lot of them five. Yeah. I've had a lot of them five. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which, which you know, that's a return on investment that is unreal. You know, what is it, that? It, it, a three thousand so, three thousand dollars to get thirty thousand dollars back. Do that all day long. Correct. And here's the other thing: if someone let's let's just say it's an agent that's doing it because they're desperate. Yeah. If they're that desperate, this is going to sound cold and callous. Okay. Um, if they're that desperate and I take it, they might be out of the business next week, and that's a win. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a win because yeah. there's one less person competing with us in the business. That's right. That's right. Well, and that's what I'm looking forward to. And you said it a little while ago, you dominate the airwaves, you dominate the social media and you are, you're, you're not just a marketing company, you're a media company Correct. as, as your company. Um, and that's where the tech companies can't compete with you. Right. And that's the thing. So this is totally side note. I was talking to a good friend of mine yesterday and um, we we're talking about C buyers, C, C and D buyers, ones that yep. are six months a year out. And he was talking about how he was going to have an ISA nurture them and, you know, just to get them there. And, and I'm like, dude, this business is still belly to belly. It's still face to face. And I said, if you have someone that's going to buy, let's just say they're going to buy, why would you let someone that's not as good as you manage that relationship until they do buy? Because let's be clear, if you call them every other week, 26 times a year, okay, spend five minutes on the phone, it's like two hours and 10 minutes. Yeah. I did the math yesterday. It's like two hours and 10 minutes, maybe two hours and 15 minutes, okay? Two hours and 15 minutes for them, somebody's going to buy a house. Or you can spend that two hours and 15 minutes prospecting to try to find someone that's going to buy a house. That's right. With the better use of time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, which is about, I would much rather you spend the two hours and five minutes, two hours and 15 minutes talking to the one that's going to buy a house. Okay. And not trying to find one that may buy a house. Correct. So, Correct. Yep. You got it. Well, Damon, we are coming to the, to the end of this. We could go on for a long time on this one. So um, any last, last words of wisdom for the audience that's looking on here and, and saying, what the, what, how, what, huh? <laughs> I, would, I would tell everybody, quit listening to those that say you can't Yeah, because they won't. Absolutely. So how does somebody get in touch with you? Easiest way, easiest way is find me on Facebook. Um, find me on Facebook. As you know, my phone number is pretty discreet. Um, yep. So find me on Facebook, shoot me an email, but God, email gets cluttered. Find me on Facebook, Damon Gutierrez. It's not hard. It's the only one in the world. Yep. Um, Damon Gutier. Um, find me on there. Shoot me a message. Um, be happy to help anybody out. Awesome. Guys, I'll put a link down there as well. So make sure if you, uh, you have some more questions for Damon, get in touch. He does, 
he does have a coaching company. So keep in mind of that as well. And he's phenomenal. So buddy, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, this has been outstanding and, and I wish more, uh, I hope a lot of people look at this and, and watch this with truly an open mind. Uh, if they don't, then that's fine too. Uh, right. Those that do and they get it. Awesome. Yeah. There'll, there'll be some that are offended. There'll be a lot to get value out of it. So, you got it. Absolutely. You got it. Damon, thank you very much. Hey, but everybody else, just check out the real estate sales summit. It's going to be exciting.